finally here. It took me 51 years to get here. 51 long years. I just come to say goodbye, Pop. I'm 51 now. Yeah, you're first born. Me and you against the world, man. Oh, I gotta go. Fuck, tell me <laughs> we get what we deserve. Oh, we get what we deserve. He was the 24th of 25 children, fathered by Toby Liston. He worked in the cotton fields. There was little schooling, and he couldn't read or write. Liston said, we grew up with few clothes, no shoes, little to eat. My father worked me hard and whooped me hard. Whoa, you let your feet run wild. Time has come as we all go down. Yeah. That's how he went to prison. And in prison, he was a headbreaker. He was feared. Anybody to fight him, any convict by himself, they had to put two or three in the ring with him to get him any kind of exercise. Down to the dark, yeah, someday we run you down. Down to the fall. this dynamic jam. The left jab, he get you going and you could not stop him. Bludgeoning Patterson in yet another first round knockout. Liston took nobody seriously, and this would lead to a colossal misjudgment. When he fought Cassius Clay, 
He didn't train at all. As a fighter, I think he should be locked up for impersonating a fighter. The unbelievable had happened, and immediately, as in all fights, rumors start. So he was telling me then, he was boxing strictly for money. It wasn't like he threw a fight. <laughs> I'm just fighting for money. You have to understand what created Sonny Liston. <laughs> this is a kid, and I say kid advisedly, in Arkansas. Father's a sharecropper. And he's probably eight, nine, ten years old, somewhere in that range, and the mule dies. And the father, who used to beat the crap out of him anyway, constantly, says, you're the mule. And he's the mule trotting the furrows in the field. You know, he said, that's, I'm not taking his crap anymore. And he ran away. Now, when a kid runs away, you know, he goes around the block and says, oh, I'll show them I won't be home for supper, you know. He goes all the way to St. Louis, from Arkansas to St. Louis, and it's an incredible, uh, in itself, is an incredible odyssey for kids. You know, he winds up getting into trouble, which is uh, inevitable, I think, for a lot of kids like that. He's a big guy, anyway. And he had nothing going for him in this life. I think what he discovers when he's a teenager is that his size can be intimidating, and he can maybe use that to his advantage. He learned how to fight in prison. Father Aloysius Stevenson first strapped the gloves on him. He had 14-inch fists that Father Stephen said it was hard to fit gloves, conventional boxing gloves, onto his hand. He had to cut them a little bit to get them on. With the help of the priest, Liston was paroled from prison into the care of boxing handlers and given a job at a local construction company. But the company was owned by a mobster and union racketeer, John Vitale. The Teamsters at that time had anything but a savory reputation. And they involved him, hired him, to enforce their strikes, their collection of debts, and any other little job that needed to be done. For as Liston's career had progressed, figures from higher up the ladder of organized crime had begun to move in. In the papers, Liston was referred to as a gorilla, a latter-day caveman, and a jungle beast. And the NAACP was horrified that Sonny was actually going to fight for the heavyweight champion of the championship of the world. They wanted a, a good Catholic kid like Floyd Patterson representing the black community. They didn't want this baleful black felon. Before the referee could count to ten in that first fight, Liston had become a mural-sized American myth a larger-than-life John Henry, two hammers, and an 84-inch reach, 23 knockouts, and 19 arrests. When he won the heavyweight championship, he at least thought he would come home to a hero's welcome. And he was hoping to see hundreds or maybe even thousands of people on the tarmac, you know, welcome home, champ, what, what, the usual thing that you see. And there was nobody. 
was no nothing. There was no evidence of any kind of activity, of organized activity in the way of welcome. And I could just see almost the air go out of him. I mean, these big broad shoulders in front of me. All the feeling of hope, of acceptance into the greater world, vanished in an instant. Even after he became champion, the Philadelphia police, they went right on harassing him. They just uh, petty things. Picking him up for standing on a street corner talking to someone. For Sonny, the last straw is when they picked him up in the park for driving too slowly. It later played out. He moves to Denver and says, I would rather be a lamppost in Denver than mayor of Philadelphia. He hated the city that much for what it had done to him. Away from the glare of the cameras, it was Geraldine who taught the world champion how to read and write. Well, we first started for writing his name, you know what I mean, and signing his name, and, and I showed him how to have best regard, and uh, he enjoyed that, you know what I mean? He called him real good. Well, you'd be surprised with Sonny Liston, he, we'd go on these long walks after food. We'd walk all over the city, and he was like a father figure to me. He'd always try to scare me out of trouble. You know, you should do this, keep your shoes shine, and uh, my mother told me this. For me, he really wanted to make certain I stayed out of trouble. The bell would ring and everybody had a strategy for me, but not him. The oh, only man I to make me back up consistently. Although he returned to the ring, winning 15 of his remaining 16 bouts, Liston would never fight for the title again. just didn't seem to fit the script. Whether it was a natural death, whether he was a drug addict, whether, whether he was killed by the mob, or whether he just died, all those, there are more theories about that than there are about how many female visitors there were to the Oval Office in their recent White House. Tyson himself has said that he identifies with Liston for the way they were both vilified by the press, stating, when every day you read in the newspaper you're evil, pretty soon, you start to believe it. Sonny Liston, I watched him here in the gym a few months ago when he was here to fight Howard King. And he can hit a guy in the elbows and just about break his arm. And I never saw Sonny that way. He was very large and they called him the big brown bear, but he was very cuddly and affectionate like a bear. Sonny was spectacular with little children and old people. If he had only been given the second chance that every other athlete, in particular boxer with a checkered background, had been given, I think he could have risen to really uh, uh, wonderful heights and done a lot of good. A final reminder from his family that there was another side to the notorious and troubled box.